Welcome back my Peta Pals. It is Chris Nichols here with Peta Pixel and today we are reviewing the brand new DJI Inspire 3. Yes, we have a full kit to play with. Now, you may or may not know that Jordan finds fly fishing incredibly boring. However, he specifically requested my incredible fly fishing skills as a model because he knows how glorious and majestic it's going to look with our drone footage. Let's get to it. Hey Jordan, I know flying drones is fun and everything, but it's boiling hot outside. I just wish I was at home, air conditioned house, editing photos on actually the product that's sponsoring us today. Tell me more. Well, it's the Sense Labs Pen Display 24 and it promises brilliant imagery and exceptional color performance. It features a Pantone certified, glare resistant, billion color display, ergonomic tilting stand, silent operation, and the surface feels natural to draw on. So check out the Sense Labs Pen Display 24 or their other drawing tablets available. Link in the description below. Wow, cool. Well, thanks, Chris. Please buy me one. My birthday's coming up in October. So we just arrived, and one thing that we're noticing, there's a fair amount of wind, so it's going to be hell for audio. I apologize, but it'll actually be a really good test for the new Inspire 3 and see how it can handle it. Okay, so we're going to get started with the drone, but first I want to introduce our special guest, Arden Shibley from Yellow House Aerial. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. So Arden, um, you are a, act like a properly accredited drone pilot. You are you are skilled enough and qualified enough to fly this thing, is that right? I would say so, yes. <laughs> and and what, do, what would we know you from? Worked on Finding Michael on Disney+, Plus, um, running wild with Bear Grylls. Oh yeah, and now Petapixel. Yeah. And now Petapixel. What an outfit, right? <laughs> and uh, I assume it's going to take you, what, 20, 30 minutes to set this up while I do my uh, specs uh, rundown? Probably three to five minutes three to five minutes all right lens change yeah okay well i don't want to keep you waiting so i'll try to get my specs on the inspire 3 done before you're done setting up how's that sound game on we'll do a little race okay yeah sounds good no <laughs> wait so big change the inspire 2 had an aps-c size sensor super 35 but the inspire 3 now has a 45 megapixel full frame sensor and of course that's going to give us lots of benefits as far as low light performance dynamic range oh he's back okay so the inspire 3 uses the same dl lens mount that you would find on the inspire 2 and for example like the ronin 4d uh, unlike the ronin 4d you cannot change this lens mount it is always going to be dl mount there's an 18 millimeter a 24 millimeter a 35 millimeter and a 50 millimeter we actually have access to all four of those lenses today. Now, all four of these lenses that are available are f2.8 maximum apertures, which is not bad. I mean, you're not going to get super shallow depth of field, but consider that drones are usually farther away from your subject. It's not really a big concern. Uh, there's no built-in ND filters on it, so you're just going to have to use ND filters on the front of the lenses the old-fashioned way, and that works fine. So now let's talk about resolution and frame rates. The Inspire 3 camera can shoot up to 8K, 30 frames per second in ProRes, which is, of course, very impressive, but you can actually push it up to 75 frames per second, 8K, if you unlock the quite expensive raw upgrade. Uh, as far as 4K, you can go 4K 60. You can actually push it to 4K 120, but it will be subsampled. But for slow motion, this camera is very capable. How close are you being done, Arden? Seconds away. Second, okay. Okay. So last thing I'm going to say then is uh, photographically, this camera shoots really nice still. Cinema DNG, which we love. It's super easy to open in anything. 45 megapixels. So the resolution does go way up. And I think I'm done. I'm done. I think I, I, think I won. Oh hey, it's future Jordan coming to you from my backyard because since when we initially shot this video, I've been able to do a little bit more testing of the image quality on the Inspire 3's camera. And I think it's really important to note that the image when you're shooting 4K or 8K below 30 frames per second is beautiful, lots of dynamic range on it. My one concern is there is still quite a bit of rolling shutter. However, as soon as you move the frame rate faster than 30 frames per second, then you're gonna find the rolling shutter is dramatically reduced, but also I suspect the bit rate is as well because we are seeing a little less dynamic range in those modes. So it is definitely something to be aware of if you plan to use the high frame rate functionality on this a lot, or if you're using using some of the lower frame rates and you plan to follow fast moving subjects a lot, you will get some rolling shutter in those situations. So when I first saw the specs for the Inspire 3 camera, I was really hoping that we were gonna get the sensor that we've seen in the Z8, Z9 with its extremely fast readout, but I don't believe this is a stacked sensor. And as a result, there are gonna be compromises in some record modes. All right, let's go back to Chris and Arden. 
So Arden, the Inspire 3 obviously looks very different than the Inspire 2. Tell us about like how it positions itself when it's landing this different. So they made it wider, first of all. Mm -hmm. It's, I think it's 28 inches from motor to motor, and that's okay. not including your blade length. Um, I think that's mainly to keep the props out because there's this new feature. You can look up, you can tilt up with the camera significantly oh. far. So even here, this frame is clean. There's nothing in that shot. You oh, and can, you don't see the, the actual drone itself. You don't see the body. So they, mm. you would do that on the Inspire 2. I just see your it would like, get in the way. svelte in shape body and my body. What about the construction of the actual Inspire 3 itself? Is it any different than the Inspire 2? It's very similar, honestly. Um, they've replaced some pieces that were previously metal in the Inspire 2 with okay. plastic, probably just for weight savings, and honestly, to the plastic lets through the GNSS sen uh, sensors, so the dual GPS pucks. Um, you wouldn't be able to do that with a metal body. The screen is great. It's nice and bright. It's a little glary. Uh, I would compare it to the Crystal Sky monitors if you've used those before. I wouldn't say it's a market improvement over those, but the touch sensitivity is day and night so much better. This is responsive, it's quick, it's snappy. Now Arden, this is your Inspire 2, right? You own this? Yes. You used it commercially for quite a few years? Yeah. And so you actually, I mean, you love this machine, I know you do, but you made a video on your YouTube channel, which everybody should check out, and you listed a lot of gripes about the Inspire 2, right? There were a lot of things to hate. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we can't, we don't have time to go through everything, but what are some of the main things that were problems on the Inspire 2 that you feel the Inspire 3 is now corrected? I think one of the first things that got me most excited was for years, I've been showing clients, they say, can we see that thing you just shot? Right. And they have a feed out of the HDMI on the Inspire 2 remote. But when you go into playback, everything changes. It shuts that off. And uh -huh. so you have to say, hey, let's see the <laughs> shot. So for years, I've been standing like this for clients, for everybody, you name it. And that was ridiculous. Now, when you go into playback, the playback is on the HDMI as well, which like, yes, thank you. Separate monitors, they can watch it. It exactly goes everywhere, the same yeah. Thing. Very cool. So that's great. Okay, what else has changed? So the second bit, I would say, there's just, it's a little bit better in a lot of ways, hmm. things you might not think. So if you pick up, I'll give you this Inspire 2 here, okay. and just hold it up from the top. Ouch, your, your Inspire 2 <laughs> cut me. <laughs> it's a little sharp. sharp. You, I'm bleeding all but over your Inspire Just two. little things that they've changed. The Inspire 3, I don't wanna, pick I'm this gonna, one up, grab yeah, that. I, I, do I trust you? Nice and beveled. Oh, yeah. Nice and beveled. See, oh, enjoyable yeah. Yeah, yeah, for your really comfort. Cool. Um, you were saying here, like the batteries here, a little bit more streamlined, uh, but you can also leave them on the actual drone when you put it away in the case. In the case, yes, which is something that somebody knew. They, if somebody's working with me, they haven't worked with the aircraft, they drop the two in with the batteries and it would just be off. And it right. would, I'd say, oh no, and you haven't worked with the system. <laughs> it, it's stupid, you gotta do it like this. As you can see, this is one of the biggest changes and most anticipated about the Inspire 3 is practically this DJI O3 air unit as the FPV camera on the Inspire. It makes it easier to navigate and see where you're going no matter when you're shooting at daytime or at night. I think another thing you were really mentioning was just overall it was a lot more enjoyable to use the Inspire 3. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, the software in the RC Plus is it feels like a bit of an overhaul, honestly, mm. from end to end. It's got new screens, things you haven't seen before on DJI Go or on the iPhone apps or Android apps. And from end to end, the software feels more refined. It feels more responsive. The touch screen feels less like a Palm Pilot and more like a real tablet where you even <laughs> get close to it and you'll press that button, which is going to come in handy when it's minus 30 out and I still have to be using this screen. So Arden, we've got a dual gain sensor now on the Inspire 3. That's a big change, right? 800 is going to be our base ISO for brighter conditions, but we can go up to 4000 ISO for low light situations. And it should promise to give us better low light performance, uh, you know, even in low light situations. Have you found that yourself testing it? Definitely. At nighttime, it looks really clean relative to anything on the Inspire 2. So uh, this evening, we're going to throw you in the river okay. and we're going to go Daytime, we'll start up nice and high and draw down to the river and then we'll fade to that evening shot, go to that second higher gain setting. Okay, so if we're gonna do one shot during the day and then we're gonna repeat that exact same shot in the evening and it has to like line up perfectly, how are we gonna do that on this Inspire 3? So we're gonna use a feature where we can set waypoints and you can play that back either as 3D dolly where you choose the speed and you can free operate the camera in that mode, okay. but we're gonna use the other option called repeatable routes. So you're not only recording and playing back the position of the aircraft, it also so records and plays back the, tan, the pan and tilt of the camera. Oh, right. So it's gonna be the same every time you do it. So you're just gonna actually fly the route, pan and tilt how you wanna do it, set up all your points, speed, direction, everything, and then it will just keep doing that over and over and over again as many times as you want. Exactly. Oh, hey, future Jordan jumping in again to uh, talk about something we forgot to mention when we were out shooting because we were getting 
eaten alive by mosquitoes and were delirious. So what we did find is I love the fact that this has waveforms for you to monitor your scene and meter things out properly. But very interestingly, the waveform it shows you is for what's being displayed on the monitor, not what the camera is actually capturing. So if I put a monitoring LUT on so I don't have to look at a flat gray image, it's going to suddenly appear like we have a lot less dynamic range than we actually do. And this seems like it would be an easy thing to fix, so hopefully DJI can address that in the future. Okay, I think the guys have like given up on shooting outside and we're going to go hide in a car to wrap this video up. Let's go back to them. So Arden, we've got some respite from the bugs, thankfully. Thank you for letting us borrow your car. Um, I think I can like communicate again as a human being. Um, anyways, so the Inspire 2, fantastic package. Who should then now look at buying the Inspire 3? I think if you're looking at the Inspire 3, you probably already know it. It's a big investment, it's a big step up. I think a lot of people will be facing the hard truth that the Inspire 2 still has a lot of value relatively. Um, this is a massive step and it might not be necessary for a lot of people. The RTK the real-time kinematics. So first off, what does that do basically? So the RTK unit allows the aircraft to figure out its location relative to a base station, a stationary unit, as opposed to the satellites. Right. So it's much easier math to do. You get a lot finer position. Gotcha. So for people that are doing surveying and things, centimeter accuracy matters. Today, we haven't used RTK at all. The mm. aircraft has set waypoints and repeated them successfully without RTK. Honestly, in my experience testing, I don't think it's a necessary piece of kit. You're not going to notice with repeatable routes or with 3D dolly, whether or not you're using RTK. I've seen the aircraft be a little fast and loose, even with RTK enabled, mm. and even the hover stability not really improved, at least by my count. Is it is it fair to say that Inspire 3 really benefits from having a second controller, an, a camera operator separate from the pilot? Absolutely, this aircraft will fit better into large film sets, so large commercials, things where you might need time code, you might want repeatable moves, right. you know, you might want that full frame. Uh, you're gonna need that low light because it DP is yelling at you, you know, it's too noisy or let's, it's dark, but let's shoot it anyway. Right. Ask me how many times that's happened, right? <laughs> that dual gain is going to come in handy. So it's just the little things like that. They're going to be, it's the edge. It's cheap compared to an Ari Alexa or a Red, right? Right, right? right. So it's that edge that it puts on, which unfortunately comes with a similar price point. Now, if you did have an Inspire 2 kit and you have a full suite of lenses, I mean, you're going to have to buy new batteries and everything, hey? but does that make sense to upgrade or is... Yeah, your lenses carry over and the WB37 batteries, which are for send -ins the RTK and the uh, RC Plus, those carry over. But aside from that, it's all new kit, most of which is included. You can get started once you have that base kit. You're not really missing anything to start shooting, except lenses. If you have the lenses, you're saving yourself 6K on the upgrade. So are you going to get one? Yes. Did you already pre-order one? I pre-ordered one, yeah. It's on the way. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys for joining us from the back of Arden's car. We hope you really enjoyed this video and learned a bit about the Inspire 3 and whether it's right for you. Big thanks to you, Arden, for helping us out. It was a brutal shoot. It shouldn't have been. It was a beautiful day, but the mosquitoes made it absolute hell. So thank you for toughing it up. So check out his work. Otherwise, leave comments below. Let us know uh, if you have any questions. We can certainly answer those as well, get into more detail. Uh, Arden, you're going to be doing probably like a more full in-depth review of this product. So yeah, I'll get more videos. You'll now. definitely want to check out his channel and you can get that as well. But otherwise, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We'd appreciate that. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks again to you, Arden. And we'll see you soon, hopefully on a mosquito-free day with more Petabook time.